Hi, I'm Dimitro from Arca and I'm in the city of Timisoara in the beautiful Union Plaza and just behind me you can see our uh, new offices from uh, where we are going to start conducting uh, operations starting with June uh, 15th. The purpose of this video is uh, related to the fact that the very well-known YouTuber and journalist uh, Scott Manley produced a video about Arca and about the launch assist system at the beginning of uh, May and we kind of felt that uh, a lot of uh, things from uh, Mr. Manley's uh, video were not uh, very necessarily very accurate and uh, we wanted to clarify some of the things he presented in uh, the video about the launch assist system and uh, about uh, our team. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A couple of days ago, Arca Aerospace announced to the world that the era of clean, safe, affordable electric rockets were upon us and they were going to revolutionize rocketry with their LAS-25, the Launch Assist System, which at this point is supposedly a 25-ton thrust rocket sitting on a test stand in Romania, fueled by water. Water does actually work, but I think they're certainly over promising or making claims that may not be entirely honest. So they have this really slick video that talks about how they can revolutionize things because regular rockets they put, produce pollution in the atmosphere, the fuels are cryogenic or they're carcinogenic or they're explosive or possibly many of the above. But they don't mention that their fuel when it's in the tank is scaldingly hot 250 degrees Celsius water, which is probably even worse. I think I would rather have them spill a bunch of kerosene near me rather than spill water at that temperature because that will strip the flesh off your bones in seconds. Uh <laughs> So Scott is making an introduction in his video about the launch assist uh, system and at some point he's saying that we are making claims that are not entirely honest. Um, and uh, a few seconds later he is uh, saying that we are not mentioning in the video that the uh, water is uh, kept inside the tank at uh, 250 degrees Celsius at high temperature. Uh, and this is not uh, really accurate because uh, we mentioned in our video that the water is kept in the tank at hundreds of uh, degrees as we can uh, see here. Uh, and uh, furthermore, we also produced a white paper for the launch assist system in which we clearly stated that the um, water is kept inside the tank at 250 degrees Celsius. And obviously, Mr. Uh, Manley took this information from uh, uh, both our white paper and uh, the video. So once again, we said that the water is kept inside at uh, hundreds of degrees and hundreds of degrees means um, minimum 200 degrees. So I would say it's a pretty um, accurate and honest uh, statement from uh, our side. So honestly, I don't understand why Mr. Manley felt the need to say that uh, um, we were claiming things that are not entirely honest. Also, uh, Scott is mentioning that in our video we said that uh, the current rockets are using uh, polluting carcinogenic uh, toxic uh, propellants and uh, the fact that our water is kept in the tank at uh, high temperature it might be even worse. And um, I kind of don't understand why hot water is uh, worse than uh, polluting um, toxic carcinogenic propellants because obviously uh, hot water is uh, none of the above. Let's uh, think a little bit about uh, what uh, Scott said, that he would rather prefer to have uh, kerosene spilled uh, near him than uh, hot uh, water. First of all, when you perform a rocket launch, it's hardly to understand why you put uh, yourself in such a scenario that uh, you are going to stay close to a fueled uh, rocket. We need to say that when a rocket tank is uh, failing and the kerosene is uh, spilled out of the tank, most probably the kerosene might uh, ignite. And uh, in the case of the water, water is... Um, 
spilled out of the tank and because of the interaction with the environment it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to get cold pretty quick and if you are staying at a distance of around 50 meters let's say uh, the water that is going to reach you is going to be cold while in the case of the kerosene most probably you are going to have a lot of flames coming to you. It has a bunch of heating elements in the bottom of it that heats the water up to about 250 Celsius. It's held there at a pressure of something like 15 atmospheres and then it f blows out through a rocket nozzle. Also Scott is saying that uh, the water kept inside the tank of the launch assist system uh, has 250 degrees and is kept at a pressure of 15 atmosphere and this is not very accurate because uh, at 250 degrees Celsius the the corresponding pressure is uh, 40 atmospheres or if you want to have uh, 15 atmospheres the water is going to have uh, only around 190 degrees Celsius so when we are making statements like this and you have a lot of fans um, that are watching you I think it's a good idea to verify to check the data because people are, are watching you and are trying to learn something from uh, these uh, videos so Arca Aerospace, the first time I heard about them, they were talking about a single stage to orbit rocket, which was going to be propelled by a linear aerospike running on kerosene and liquid oxygen. And that immediately I was like, that does not sound, that sounds way too ambitious for what it could be. Because kerosene and liquid oxygen doesn't really give you the specific impulse to get you a single stage to orbit with any usable payload. But you know, I, I figured they were overstating things. So Scott is saying that uh, the has to see a rocket, single stage to orbit uh, has to see a rocket uh, equipped with the linear aerospike rocket engine is using uh, liquid oxygen and kerosene. And this information is not accurate because we never said something like this. Uh, has to see a rocket is using hydrogen peroxide and uh, kerosene. He is also saying that the combination of liquid oxygen and uh, kerosene is not suitable for a single stage to orbit rocket. But once again, we never said something like this. We said hydrogen peroxide and uh, kerosene, which is in fact even a lower uh, specific impulse uh, propellant. But we need to mention that uh, studies performed by the US Air Force and NASA indicated that, uh, and as we can see here, indicated that the hydrogen peroxide and kerosene combination is even better than the liquid oxygen and the kerosene, even in the case of a lower specific impulse because of the higher density. And having a higher density, it means smaller tanks and lighter tanks, which is vital in the case of a single stage to orbit rocket. Which I'm, it sounds like they got water delivered and I'm going to say 25 tons thrust, you know, four tons of uh, that, that makes about sense given that uh, steam rockets get specific impulses of you know 100 maybe 150 depending upon the temperature scott is mentioning that we brought uh, the test stand four tons of uh, water and uh, also the fact that las 25d is rated 25 tons of thrust and also the fact that um, the specific impulse of hot water depending on the temperature is in the range of 100 to 150 seconds and uh, he's um, saying that uh, this sounds uh, about right and um, honestly it doesn't this value of 100 uh, to 150 seconds of specific impulse is completely inaccurate and um, i'm openly saying this actually the specific impulse is in the range of 50 to 60 seconds the the problem mainly is that you you can't heat it up and keep it pressurized in the tanks reliably at, at that level Scott is saying that you can't heat the water and keep it in the tank uh, reliably. Um, we did this on uh, a small uh, installation and also on the big uh, installation and uh, you can. My main objection to this is that they're using batteries as a heat source and batteries have a really lousy energy density compared to almost all the alternatives out there. Scott is saying that his main objection is related to the fact that LAS is using batteries as the heat source. Well, this is not entirely true because while LAS is on the launch pad or on the test stand, before the engine start, we are using an external power supply 
to heat the water inside the tank. And uh, this external power supply, it's in the range of 93% from the total amount of uh, heat we are using on uh, an LAS uh, test or uh, flight. And the rest of 7% is uh, coming from the batteries. So, and only in the case of the reusable uh, LAS. I mean, a lot of this looks like they've been running the whole operation on a shoestring budget most of the time. They've got investors that kind of come and go and they're always doing things to try and attract new investors. Uh, there was one point where they took a bunch of drone motors and put them in a big, you know, big box and created essentially a hoverboard and tried to uh, you know, run a Kickstarter for that. They got all sorts of you know, cool video and pictures of that, but never went anywhere. The, they had a drone, a large like, you know, something that was like a predator sized drone that was electric. Again, never really got anywhere. They've talked about uh, aircraft, rocket planes. They built demo, demo hardware, again, never went anywhere. And their Haas rocket was originally a two-stage rocket using a conventional nozzle until it got reinvented as this single stage to orbit with a, uh, an aerospike. So we never went anywhere with the Air Shadow and uh, with the Arca board and with other uh, hardware that we have flown. Well, Arca was an NGO and still is an uh, NGO and we incorporated the company in the US in 2015. So for more than um, 15 years, we were exclusively an NGO and all the hardware that we developed, we developed under a governmental contract for a unique technology uh, that we were supposed to build and fly uh, or under a sponsorship. And we never wanted to produce, mass produce our technologies and uh, sell our technologies. And Air Strato and the Arca board were our only uh, products that we wanted to produce and sell. And with the Air Strato, the story is very simple. Air Strato is no longer into our inventory, is with um, an investor from uh, Chicago that, and we gave this um, project to them for a depth that we had with uh, them. And also the Arca board, uh, that's true, it never uh, really took off. And uh, But we had a contract with the US Department of Defense, with DARPA and uh, with the US Army. Unfortunately, because of what happened to me and the um, allegations of uh, fraud, for which we I um, demonstrated in court, I was completely innocent. And Scott, I really want to thank you for mentioning this in your video. Um, we never had the chance to really put this into production and uh, make it a successful uh, product. So except these two products, we never wanted to have um, commercial uh, products. During these 20 years, we were able to build a lot of hardware, test and fly a lot of hardware and gave us a very unique experience in uh, designing, building and testing uh, drones, personal flying, uh, electric flying vehicles, rockets, uh, etc. and performing missions with the Navy, with the Air Force and so on. And uh, all of this uh, actually allowed us to develop um, right now technologies that are uh, cutting edge and uh, help us move the company forward. I'll give you also an example out of the um, around 23 companies that were initially involved in the Ansario X-Prize competition, only two or three actually survived. And uh, it says a lot about our dedication and uh, commitment to, to go forward. And also, you are mentioning that we are operating on a shoestring budget. Um, yes, you are right. Uh, sometimes we are uh, operating under uh, a limited budget and we are very proud of it. And this allowed us to develop this um, and gain experience in developing hardware and performing tests with a low budget. And uh, I honestly be more concerned about the competition if they will be able to keep up the pace with us in terms of uh, development of uh, cost-effective uh, rocket uh, technologies. And at the end of of the day we are going to see the conclu uh, conclusion who's going to win and who's going to lose the ones that are putting big amounts of money into hardware development or the ones that are cost effective
Rockets powered by water aren't a new concept and they're not necessarily a bad concept, but I haven't seen anyone proposing a steam rocket as the first stage to a conventional rocket. So maybe it gets somewhere, but I personally don't think it will. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Scott is mentioning that he never uh, saw a uh, water-based rocket being proposed as a first stage for an orbital launcher. Now, the fact is that uh, there were projects uh, in the past related to this uh, proposed by the German Aerospace Institute, as you can see here. So yes, there were some uh, initiatives related to this. And um, let's hope that this uh, extremely cost-effective technology is going to really uh, take off and is going to represent uh, a major change in the way we are launching um, payloads into space. We have uh, major uh, money coming in, um, even uh, these days, and uh, important uh, investments and uh, sponsors for the launch assist system. And uh, yes, these uh, people that are uh, coming saw the um, important opportunity in uh, bringing the cost of the space uh, launches uh, down. And our objective is to bring it down uh, 10 times. And uh, with this, I'm going to conclude. Thank you very much, Scott, for producing this uh, video. And uh, we look forward for future videos related to our